of all things, today we will be making a tutorial on twisting crystals. I am using Blender version 3.01. We will start off this tutorial by deleting the lamp and the camera. First step to create a twisting crystal is to twist the cuboid. Now the real question is, how do we convert the cube into cuboid? Well, it is really easy. You have to just scale it in X axis. You can do that by clicking X. S for scaling and you should scale in X axis. Click X. So it will scale in the X axis. Now you have achieved the cuboid. The next step is to twist the cuboid itself. You can do that by heading over to modifier and adding a modifier called simple deform. And you can twist the cuboid. But as you can see, the cuboid itself is not twisting correctly because it lacks cuts in between the cuboids. You can add that by going to edit mode by tapping tab in the edit mode, select the cuboid itself and press Ctrl R. You can see a yellow line and scroll the scroll wheel on your mouse so it will increase the cuts and just click left click and right click. You have many cuts in the keyboard. Go back to the object by you can either go to object mode by pressing tab or going over here and clicking object mode. Now when you twist the keyboard it will twist very neatly. Now the next step is to create a part which the keyboard will move. In order to create a part, you should add a curve. You can do that by clicking Shift A and going over to Curve and Bezier. But nothing happens because the curve itself is hiding inside the cube. You can toggle X-ray mode either going to this button or clicking Alt Z. And you can see the Bezier. Now I will scale it up, press X and scale it. You can see a Bezier. Now I will go to edit mode to edit that Bezier as my packing. Click one vertex and press E to extrude it and R to rotate it. You can set it up as you want. I think this looks good. Now you have to make the uh, cuboid to move in this path. You can do that by adding a modifier. You select the cuboid and go to modifier, add curve modifier. So in this modifier, curved object, select curve. And to move the cuboid in this path, you have to click G and X so it is moving X axis if you don't press X then it will move randomly as I show you it will move randomly not in the path it is important to press G G and X to make this easier press N transform bar will open lock the Y and Z axis now when you press G, it will only move in X axis. You don't have to press X over and over and over again. But I have a problem with this. When I press G, it is not rotating as I move this. And to rotate this, you can go to simple deform modifier, set the origin to curve itself. And when you press G, it will rotate in this path. Now, the next step is to make this cuboid in aerodynamic shape. To do that, you should you must go to edit mode. You can go that by clicking tab. And over here, select the first face. You can do that by either clicking uh, all the four vertices or just going up here and 
clicking on page and the hot key for this is one two three the second one is for lines so it will only select lines and third one is for face so you can just go by clicking one two three click the face and press s to scale and as you can see i want this all the vertices to scale at the same time to do that just go over here and turn on proportional editing then press s and just scroll the wheel and another important point is you must not scale on x axis press shift x because it will interfere with the length of the curve itself when you are happy with the thing press 0 so you get that sharp pointy look do the same exact thing now we got this but i want to make it slimmer you can do that by click one of the face and press l so the whole thing will be selected in edit mode it is a pain to select all the phases one by one so just click one select one phase and press l so the all the phases will be selected now switch off the proportional editing and press s and shift x so it will get slimmer now the next step is to animate this bring the timeline line thing to zero and also the object where you want to start so i'm gonna place it over here when you are happy with this position you can click I make sure your the frame rate thing is zero. Click I and location this thing to insert a keyframe. It is a keyframe menu. You can only animate things by adding keyframes. So add location keyframe and the hotkey is for this is L. You can see the L is underlined, so that's the hotkey. To add a keyframe firstly. You can just go ahead and press I L. So you can see a rhombus over here. Th that is the keyframe. And another thing is we are doing a simulation. So this has to be very, very smooth. Go to output properties and set the frame rate to 30 or 60. I'm going with 30. And increase the frames over here. I'll keep it at 300 and move the timeline to 300 now move the object to the last point where it ends and again you press i l so it is animated now when you hit space the animation will play Now you should have noticed carefully, at the starting, the object moves very slow. The middle, it moves fast and during the end, it will move slow. Now I don't want that. You can remove that by going to this line and right click and vertical split. Over here, split the screen in half. I'm going to shrink this time. Go over editor type and choose graph editor so basically it's the same as a timeline but it is in graph now select the two keyframes in blender you have to select one keyframe and hold shift and select another one you can't select both of them by just clicking if you just do that one has to be Deselected. Click Shift and select another one and press V and choose Vector. Now, what happened is along the way the object speed will be equal. So, when you press play, it will have the same speed throughout the path. Now, when you're done with this, if you want to shrink this, just go and right click over there and join areas and 
just put your place the arrow this side where the graph editor is and it will go now when you play the animation it will look really smooth and even now the next step is to duplicate the crystal itself so select this crystal bring it back to its original place and press tab to go to edit mode and you have to duplicate this now over here you can navigate the whole 3d thing so go over here and click x you can see a front view of, of your crystal now if you noticed you can see a grid pattern this allows us to place the things in equal distance so I'm going to duplicate this eight times I think and we'll use this grid to keep it in an equal distance to duplicate the crystal cell select the whole crystal as I said click one phase and press L so it will select all and over here click on X and press shift D and I'm going to place the duplicate over here on the second grid and if you find difficult to place it really evenly just hold control then it will snap in place hold control then left click so it has been duplicated do the same thing again yeah and now select both of them so hover on to this thing and press L and again shift D and I'm going to place over here yeah now you can see the distance between all the four crystals are same now we'll duplicate one more time so select all the crystals by hovering the mouse onto the crystal and pressing L and press shift D and S so it will move outwards you should keep in a symmetrical way so I have placed over here and this became really really big I want to decrease the size of the crystal you can do that by selecting the things you want to decrease the size and going over here to the pivot point and clicking median point and now press S so it will scale down you can do that by going to pivot point and selecting individual origins and now you can scale it down I'll do the same to inner circles I want to scale it down a little bit so select this four and press S and scale it down to bring the circles closer go to the pivot point and set this to median point and select the things and press S so it will come closer again I'll do the same to this too Now I will scale this in x axis. I want this to be long. So press x and x. Do the same to the other four. And s in x axis. Now I'm going to move the this duplicates back. So you can do that by selecting all the things and pressing G in X axis so it will move backwards. 
and again do the same thing to inner circle G in X axis. So there we have it. We got our uh, crystal form. Now make sure you're happy with this result, then only move forward. Now when you play the animation, you will get this cool crystal going in the path that you created. Now, in the next step, we will smooth out the things. As you can see, uh, the crystal, you can see a boxy pattern over here and also on the curve also. So to eliminate this, we have to smooth it out. First, we'll start off by smoothing the crystal. To smooth out the crystal, select the crystal, go to modifier, add modifier and add bell. Now add another modifier called subdivision surface, it will become smooth. And bevel has added the modifier like this and we don't want like like that so just click this thing and move to first it will, it will get the box here pattern it basically changes the uh, shape and angle it has been applied so go to this and just to move to first so it will change the thing so now you can see it is very smooth now to smooth the curve select the curve go to curve properties over here and just increase the resolution of the curve i'm going to keep it at 64 now if you see the curves it is become smooth and also look at the if you want even smoother, you can just go to modifier and uh, increase the subdivision modifier so it will become even smoother. Now, in this step, we'll be adding a camera. Before you add a camera, Find a good place so you can place the camera because you can see your crystals details through camera only. If you mess this step, then your whole thing will be messed up. Once you're happy with your placement, shift. press Shift A and add a camera. But as you can see, the camera itself is in the middle. But we want our camera to be aligned to our viewport. So you can do that by going to view, align view, and align active camera to view. So the whole thing is aligned with the our view. But it's a little bit zoomed in, but, uh, but we have to zoom it out. So click the camera and press G and just move it a little bit out. Bro. Yeah, now I'm happy with the placement. Play three to four times before you uh, place the camera because this is the most important part. Find your best setup for yourself. Now, in this step, we'll add lights. And I'm not going to use a regular light like this. Points and all thing. Instead, I will create a plane, two planes. So, mesh plane. So, I added a plane over there. So, I will scale it up and I will move this little bit down. 
and I will I will duplicate this like over here. Next step is to go to shading and go to render. So you have to click render and click the arrow and turn on scene lighting and scene well. Now before you do this, I recommend you change your render engine to cycles and uh, if you choose cycles and if you have a very fast dedicated GPU then I recommend you to use GPU compute so it will just render faster and again you can see the sample frame rate is set to 1024 now you can reduce that to 40 I'll keep it to 40 you can keep it to 60 or uh, 60 or 70 now make sure the plane is selected and click new when you click new you get this thing principal BSDF and I want you to delete this delete this now it doesn't have a BDSD and uh, so when I have a Add a, another BDSC called emission. So click shift thing, go to shader, uh, press emission, and connect the emission to the surface. Now this acts like a lamp, and you can change the strength of the lamp and also the color. I'm ready to now. So I'll keep the you can change the color of the lamp to anything you want. So that is why I choose the emission thing than the sun or other things. Uh, do the same to the other. Do the same thing to the other also. Delete the principal BSDA shader emission and surface but when you click on the camera you cannot see your object because it is blocking your view and we don't want this to be rendered click on the object go to object properties and in the visibility tab go to ray visibility and switch off camera and shadow when you're rendering this you cannot render this object so you cannot see the object in real life but the light will be present again do the same thing to the, this camera and shadow so this is also off but this world this looks pretty empty so I'm going to make this into black so that the crystal points out go to the world properties and under the color I'm just going to drop to black so you can see that the only crystal can be seen in this thing this draws attention by the way if you have problem with the low FPS running, then you can turn off the bevel and the subdivision modifier. Don't cancel it, just stop in viewport so it will play 30 FPS because uh, this is important while animating. Now, in this step, we'll give the crystal a glass look and uh, color so you can do that by selecting the crystal and clicking on new so you get the same principle bsdf and now also i want to delete that and shift a texture now add a glass bsdf and just put it to surface if you see closely this became a glass and if you turn on the bevel and the subdivision surface which I told you to turn off 
you can see a smooth glass and now we will color this glass in the order the starting and the end will be a different color and we can add a different color in the middle also so let's say if you have green color in the starting and a blue color in the ending that is possible and also you can add a yellow color in the middle you might be wondering how do you do that well it's very easy so again come over here <coughs> shift a and go to converter color ramp and connect the color to color and again we'll put another uh, thing which is texture gradient texture and we'll join it the first one is i think the front so we'll call we'll change the color and see uh, i'll set this yeah this is back okay i'm going to set this to blue and this one click this the uh, thing and this is front so i'm going to keep it green now we can see we have a multicolor crystal but let's say if you want to have a different color to this fins out of fins you can do that by going to edit mode i'll just go to the layout model so in edit mode press x as i said click pass you want to separate from this thing because uh i forward this to say this because when you're in object mode if you select the thing all will be selected if you select the fin all will be selected so go back to edit mode layout edit mode so select which and all you want to separate from this thing so i'm going to select the outer wing after selection go to mesh separate by selection so it is it is separated so go back to shading i just do this thing. yeah and click one of the fin so you can see all the fins are selected and now press this thing new material and now you can make any changes you want so at the back i want this to be green so i'll set this to green and uh, starting i'll put it to yellow yeah now it's perfect by the way i want to match this green with the other green so i'm going to copy the x code you can do that by going to x and click this substance and again i will add this x code so the starting and the ending will be the same color and this blue seems to be pretty dark i'm going to put it the light blue. yeah that's that does the job i will increase the strength of the emission because the crystal is looking very dull so keep it that to do and i think it will be uh, i got that so now our crystal will be a little bit better than the previous one yeah now it looks great now this is the last step of this video by the way we have done everything we have created a good twisting crystal and the last part only focus in the render how to render this into a video file so it is pretty easy for this 
and you have to go to output properties and set the resolution you want and you come to output and this is the very important very important thing you click on this folder and you have to you know, give this uh, destination where the render file would be so i'm going to just keep it in render in twisting thing so you should give a name so i'm just gonna you have to give a path for the render video to be saved otherwise your video would be found anywhere and another thing is to change the image to movie and i recommend you to select the mpeg video well if you are editing after this section i recommend you to go with png but if you are not editing i recommend mpeg video and also go to render properties and by the way i said this if you have a very fast gpu then i recommend cycles otherwise if you are using a laptop or any uh, system with integrated graphics i recommend you to use the ev but if you want to use ev you cannot use this lamps what i showed you that lamps you have to use that regular lights these lights points and an area so if you want to render in ev just set to the just set the lights to area and by the way i was telling if you if you have the powerful gpu and i recommend cycles and keep the uh, max samples to 60 to render uh, 60 is good and turn on denoising and well, if you want the uh, fast render then you can set it to fast or if you want to accurate really good image then you can keep it to accurate i'm going to leave it uh, leave it in the fast when you're done and cooled with a if if you want to see a image preview of your object then you should go to render render image then your image will be will get render as you can see this is my image it's rendering right now and there it is